Hey, this is Tracy with Color Me This. I am finally here with episode 32, I believe. I did not double check that. It has been crazy hectic here. I had an artisan market and I was silly and took custom orders for sympathy cards from two different people. So I had to stop my coloring on the using the Evazars to get that finished up. And then I had to mail out all of my Thanksgiving cards. So I finally had some time to sit down and finish off all of my Evazar swatching color combos and coloring. And today I brought a second set to compare to because in most of the reviews I've seen, these two either reviews or on Facebook groups, you know, what pencils are most like Prismacolor and uh, Artex comes up a lot and I don't own Arteza. So we are going to do some reviews of my materials I have colored, my thoughts on the pencils, and then we're going to do a little bit of comparison to the Artex. So the color swatch that comes with the product is a uh, smooth cardstock. It is actually a nice heavy cardstock. It is very smooth. So you will see as we go through that there's um, some streakiness and I didn't really work hard to try to smooth these out. Uh, I saved that for the coloring project that I will share with you. So we have lots of yellows, not as many oranges, plenty of reds. My biggest thing with the pencils is that they get dark enough. Like for me, the Brute Funer squares, they do not have dark enough, say blue and even a dark purple. So this is going to be, because it's a smooth cardstock, the colors aren't as vivid as the coloring paper that I color on. So, uh, I do feel that this set of pencils gets dark enough. I still could go darker. I always could go one, one darker. I'm looking actually just reviewing this, you know, like we have this black current that's plenty dark. It's like I would like a set of very light lights. Like I think that this uh, set has nice lights. I would like a light, a very light of each a color family tone and a very dark dark of each color family tone and I don't know that there's any set that does that for me. Uh, now keep in mind I'm not a Prismacolor person and now that I've worked with these two sets that I'm going to compare today I am actually gathering up the the gumption to break out the full set of Prismas that all I've ever done with them is swatch them because of all the nightmares I've heard about them breaking and then they are a creamy, creamy pencil, and I am a polychromos oil pencil person. I had always avoided them uh, beyond swatching them and using them um, to get the color matches for it. That's all I've done with them. So now that I have spent time with Evazar and Artex, I am thinking that I am ready to do all of these tests I'm going to share with you today with the Prismas because I'm curious if now that I have progressed enough on my coloring journey to go pretty deep into the waxy side of things, the creamy um, soft pencils, I might be ready to do that. So and again back to the colors, uh, purples well represented, you've got like the blue side and then the, the pinky side. I like all of their pinks. There's two really nice pinks here. Totally different shades. You know, a peachy pink and then a pink, purpley pink. Light tones. Love it. I like the Arctic blue a lot and the turquoise. Uh, again, I still would like to see darker. They've got the, the blue greens and uh, purpley blue and then the purpley blues down here, but I still would like a little bit more darks. I would like to see one more dark in the purples. The greens I will talk about. There's plenty of greens. I feel that the tones of greens, the greens start back over here. I love that they have the kind of, to me, there's, there's the leaf green, 
there's the Kelly green tones, the blue green tones, and then you have the mossy green tones. I think I am missing what, um, I would like a lighter, this apple green is, is not quite as mossy as I would like, so I would love a light moss green that they don't have. But I do love uh, British Racing Green is a lovely dark. This Seaweed Green is a lovely dark for the dark teal. And then the browns are okay. I still think I would like more. Like this could easily be made into a 150 set to satisfy all of my hopes and dreams for colors. And then the, the color range of the grays is pretty good. And on this slate gray, totally I wish they would not have used that name because that is purple. And see, they have green gray, charcoal gray. I, I just don't understand the slate gray because that is not slate gray, but I think I've already seen people mention that. All right, so now the pencils themselves are a beautiful, thick, lovely pencil with a nice thick lead. This one has not been sharpened. I did most of my swatching until I hit the greens. I didn't do any sharpening. Oh, it looks like a yellow here I sharpened, but I think it's because I colored with this one. And I, oh yeah, I did some, uh, when I did my color combos, that's when I felt the need to do some sharpening. But if I grab a couple of other pencils here, here's a poly. Uh, I'm a little close, so let me move this to the side so we can do some checking. Today I've grabbed a luminance, a poly, this is the shorty, but I think that the leads, it, it might even be that the lead of the poly is a little bit smaller than the luminance and the Evazar. Now, since I have them, I do have out, this is on the far right, it is the Artex, and I'm looking through the screen, or the camera lens here, and I can't see, so now I'm gonna look at them. And I am gonna say that the Poly and the Artex are slightly smaller in diameter of the pencil, as well as the lead by a tiny bit, and the thickest uh, pencil barrel is the Luminance. And the other three, these three are all the same diameter. Oh, and Hub just walked in, so I'm gonna switch you off for a sec, see, get him settled, and then I'll be back. All right, I am back, Hub is settled. So, I had a video recently where I kind of showed my craft room, which is actually a finished off Florida room. So behind me, like I'm staring, I'm sitting at the, at the window. I have two windows uh, facing the trail, one on the left and then the one on the right. And the one on the right is where my desk is. So when I come over here to sit down at the drafting table, I'm right in front of the window. But behind me is a three pane uh, sliding door that's huge that when he is home, I close it when I'm filming so that most of the sound is buffered. So uh, the, that means that I get pretty warm in here because this room originally was just a, you know, it was, had screens and it wasn't all finished inside. So there is no AC going to this room, which for people in Florida, that's crazy. But normally this big triple heavy glass sliding door is always open so I get enough cool air and I always run cold anyway so I prefer being down here sometimes I'll walk up uh, into the house from my craft room and it's freezing in there compared to the warmer feel that I get in here so it's like I just don't get that cold AC snap I still have a fan overhead and a fan below me uh, that I carry around with me when I move around the room. So it's really not that bad. We have had three days of continuous rain, almost constant rain, and it is like 95% humidity outside. I think it's about 78 right now. But the last three days was in the low 70s, which was lovely. I was actually wearing pants, yoga pants, and a hoodie. 
to exercise with. Okay, so we were talking about the barrel sizes and the look of the Evazar pencils, which have a lovely, uh, it is a holographic three rings. Uh, the, the lettering is from my eyes uh, way better than the Artex. So there's all of this busyness here and it does have a skew on the Artex as if they might sell them as singles where the Evas are definitely not, uh, not without putting a skew sticker on it anyway. And then these teeny tiny letters that actually in this light, I can read them okay, but it's awfully small for most people. So I really, really appreciate the large, easy to read, silver over gold lettering. Uh, the pencils themselves only had a couple with issues. I went ahead and numbered, so I have already shown you other sets where I have a slip of paper that has a colored color and the number all the way down the line. Because these are numbered 1 through 130, I didn't have to do the cheat sheet, but I did do a number at the top and a number at the bottom in acrylic white paint, a paint pen, so that I can easily know if I have a lot of these pulled out, I can just slide and see what range I'm in per page of the pencils. I think that the pencils are, here's one that has a little bit of a discoloration. Most of them do not have a discoloration. One or two are cracked. Uh, one or two have a you can see a faint seam on this one. Uh, I am guessing that somehow these pencils are in half and then they get glued around the lead. And some of the pencils you can see, I saw that with the Artex as well. Uh, the ends are dipped, the paint is glossy and consistent and very beautiful. And I didn't see the colors so far, but of course I was doing color combos and in the color combos and the one coloring project which I chose to do, you know how, how I love my frogs, I moved away from frogs, although I still maybe want to do a set of frogs for every single pencil set, but my second favorite color is purple, so my coloring project I have done is in purple. We do have fluorescent type colors. This says it's coral. Um, here are my swatches. So we'll check a couple of the barrels for how well they match. So this is starting with, I'm going in the numbers from one and I could have not written the names of them, but I tend to like to get to know the names of the pencils. So I wrote them all out and let's make sure that you can see them. I have the, the camera out as far as it will go out and I'm going to do a couple of checks. So this clearly looks like a fluorescent uh, peach. It is the name Coral and on the swatches let's get Coral out here and see what we think. Coral. So right off the bat, I'm going to say that the barrel is way more vibrant than the actual uh, pencil lead color. So this was a perfect one to test uh, and it is not a fluorescent. So let's check a couple more just to see if that is true. Let's just flip. Let's grab a pink. Okay. So French fuchsia and I don't think that's the correct spelling of fuchsia, but hey, it's a na pencil name they can make. That doesn't have to be an official name if they don't want it to be. So that's number 43. All right, so 43 French fuchsia, 43 French fuchsia. So here's the difference when you have a glossy 
um, a really, really smooth paper. Uh, this is the same pencil here and here, and you can see that the vibrancy is lost on this really smooth paper. And for color matching, I'm going to say it's okay on the bright side using the rougher paper. This is that Nina Bristol Vellum. But this actually looks like 44 Cerise to me, even though it is actually this 43 French Fuchsia. So let's go back and look at the Cerise color here. And I actually think it's still a better match to the Cerise. So let me see. Here are the two colors. This is the one next to it, Cerise. I'm guessing at how to pronounce that. Cerise is, I am actually going to say, they are almost identical. They're, in fact, the fuchsia is just a tad bit darker, so it's not perfect. These are pretty interchangeable to me. The colors are pretty darn close, but if it were me, I would be reversing. So now I've just flipped them, and I think that the barrel color for the Cerise is better for the French Fuchsia. Uh, so that's kind of the story of the barrels. You know, you're only going to get so, so close of a match. Um, and I have found that when I did my purples, the barrels, again, are pretty close and don't display the full range. So what I'm saying, I guess, is don't count on the barrels to be consistent for you because they are not. They are not a very, very close match. All right, so here's my swatches that I did uh, on the rough. And I, I liked how the pencils did the solid full... I tried to do a really good job of filling in because a couple of other sets I've told you, oh, I see some paper, so I was kind of sloppy. I think the Kalur 120s, I was a little sloppy. So in this set, I tried to be very consistent on the, the filled in darkest color being as filled in as possible without any extra work. So they, I self burnished all of them. I did find a weird problem back here at the beginning. Somewhere along the line, I found the need. In this lighting, you can't see the burnishing on these lighter colors, but something made me want to test a paper towel. I do have a chunk of paper towel here. I'm going to save it for a test later. But you'll see that if you get really close on this white, Maybe there was some black, whatever it was, when I took a paper towel to it, it ended up rubbing some of the black over here onto this 003 white. And this white is really creamy. So I have a black pad here, and when we're done with the general walkthrough, I am going to go ahead and take and do the whites. I'm going to start a sheet of black and do whites and do some comparisons. What I have right now here beside me is, I'm going to grab them, Pablo White, Museum Aquarelle White. I do not, I know that the, I only have tight buff, no, this is, uh, oh, these are so hard to read. This is Luminance totally why they chose when they have the whole round barrel to use a tall skinny very fine stroke font I don't know this is primrose yep primrose 242 so that's not white um, this is, these are just my in process I do have the Derwent drawing white so that, that will be like that and the museum aquarelle white so I've got three really good whites and then we'll test those uh, the two new ones against them. But of course, these are professional grade pencils, so it might be an unfair test. Okay, so those pencils have been gathered. So I had a funky thing happen over here with some some of the pigment moved, dry, dry movement. 
I'm going to try something. This black current right here. I'm just going to see that. So I'm going to say these pencils really smudge. So when you're making projects with them, I haven't even thought about light testing now. This is just when you're putting the paper down. I went and got glassine. After this incident, I have a big roll of what's called glassine that is a protectant that you can get it. You can use tissue as well if you wanted. You could even use paper towel. Um, but I would definitely, with these pencils, use protection on your artwork as you're coloring. Do not let your hand rest directly on the pencils because this is what happened and then I just picked a dark color to test and I didn't even rub very hard and all of that pigment came off. So they are not um, gonna stick to the paper. They, they will move around by your hand. Uh, so looking at the colors now, we already looked at them on the swatch that was provided, which again I said was a very smooth uh, paper. I get a way more vibrant finish on the pencils with my, this is the smooth side of the Bristol Vellum. There is a rougher side that if I needed to I could go use and I still am looking for I love the light blue. This this light blue is not commonly provided. So they do really well with the lights. Again, I think that the browns, browns are hard because look at all these different tones of browns. So they, they have a, a cream over here. Then they go to butternut. So I'm looking at the different kind of tanny browns. There isn't really a tan in here. Maybe peaches and cream is the only tan or beige that we get. And then for the dark browns, you do have dark chocolate and mocha. I appreciate having a rust. There's even this, if you wanted to go a darker rust, this phalo red is even darker. But I still think that I would like, there isn't a true navy blue. This navy blue looks so close to royal blue almost this almost identical blueberry blue I think is a good blueberry blue but navy blue needs to be below it and way darker on the scale and I do really love this this is actually in my mind like a Prussian blue though they call it dark steel blue the greens like I said are pretty good so now let's talk about the weird behavior with the greens I have when I was working on the greens, so this is like a scratch sheet. And it was 092 that started to behave a little funky. 092. Pine green. So I'm gonna go to that page. So pine green, and now I might Close, get closer. Gonna go ahead and zoom in close and hopefully not forget that I've zoomed in close. So I wrote notes. Uh, there was a chunk of pigment on the end, so it was coloring in and it's not doing it now. By the way, when I use these, the, the pencil that comes to mind, the brand of pencil is actually Pablo, is what these feel like to me. Because they're not creamy. You can even hear, I hope you can hear that. They're more, they're kind of silky, but not as silky as a poly. Uh, and there's these lines. You can see that I didn't get it to smooth out when I was trying to clear the issue with the pigment. Trying to get a super smooth finish with these is a little bit of, bit of work. And then look, there's some chunks. So it does, uh, with some of the colors, especially the greens, just don't have a smooth lay down. It's just weird. Um, I think, I know when I did the light fast, Derwent light fasts, there was a couple of colors, they were dark colors that were almost grainy in their pigment. And I guess that is the best way 
uh, to describe. I used the word scratchy and then I was silly and did not write the color number of this. And I believe just based on the color tone that this is a uh, 94. I did a lot of work on this 94 to try to get it to smooth out. I'm doing heavy layers here. Over here you'll see I did light layers and then I moved over. I might have worked out whatever was scratchy on these. I've also colored with them both techniques. There's people who like the smooshing method so they go in really hard like with the heaviest pressure and just fill in the tooth in one pass and then there's the school of thought of the oil pencil people which I am of light layers and these pencils actually do both and I'm not feeling the scratchiness but look at how much I worked this pencil to get whatever was bothering it out of its system. You can also see that I did sharpen this pencil. So I sharpened 92, I had to sharpen 94. I still feel that the filling in of the pigment of these is not as smooth and even as I would like. And remember green is my favorite color so I always very much concerned myself with how the greens lay down. Uh, 97 was almost scratchy. Let's test this one today. 97 is jade green. Uh, you can see I got a pretty even finish here. I think this looks pretty smooth. And then I also had to sharpen this one. You know, this is where I don't like to sharpen my pencils. I hate to lose all that pigment at the very beginning. Uh, and then you'll also see here, I still say almost scratchy. I don't know if you can see this, but almost scratchy. I can almost see scratches and then I'm also getting some dust. So I think the greens have to be monitored. Um, something that I do as a trick when a pencil is not as smooth as I want, I can, and it's, maybe it's really dark, you can mix in some white, which I didn't do with any of these. But if you take a good white and you, it's to me kind of like mixing taffy. I'm mixing white taffy with dark green taffy to smooth out that color tone. So I think that that right there helps to even out. So always remember this is a trick. You can even use a blending pencil, uh, which I do have here. Though sometimes when you use, what I'm finding happening a lot of times with these blending pencils, they'll, if you go too heavy, which is why I prefer mixing a little bit of white in, you'll see this dust. I am actually scraping off with this blending pencil some of the pigment. Uh, I find this happens, so it happens with the Brute Funer squares as well when I try to use a blending pencil. Uh, the pigment so literally you can see I'm just I'm almost erasing so that you have to be very careful of with these pencils because their pigment has a lot of movement look at all that pigment on the blender pencil so that's where for me I would prefer to add white with this particular set of pencils to even out a color I don't want to use the blending pencil and end up removing my pigment because then I'm just back to having, having to add pigment because I don't get the color I was after. So that is an interesting note. 
The next color I had some issues with was 99. I say it was dry. So let's see if we can hear the dryness. Uh, again, I don't see that it's a very smooth application. Yeah, this is actually uh, of the bunch. See how it's so inconsistent? It was just the greens that I had these kinds of issues. Very strange. So that's what I've got for my notes. I didn't have any other color family that behaved strangely. And then from here on down, since I already had this scratch sheet, and this is a scratch sheet because it went through the printer crooked and see it cut off the bottom. So I might as well get some use out of it. I did color blends or color combos next. And I thought it did on all the colors except the greens again. The color combos were really well blended. They blended nicely. You know, these are just my uh, checking of my colors. And I thought they did a great job. So I will get my color combo sheet. I pulled out the Artex color combo sheet as well. All right, so this is the same colors that I have been doing. I'm gonna move my thing back out. Oops, I am testing the boundaries of my stand here. There we go. So it has been a long time since I've done the Artex, so I'm probably gonna do, want to do a little bit with them to just see how I feel about them versus the uh, Evazar. So the Evazar paper is my Bristol vellum, so I'm going to get a little bit brighter color than I am on the Artex because I did it so long ago. I didn't own the Bristol vellum smooth, so all I had was the Nina cover copy 80 pound smooth, which is my card crafting paper. So looking at the colors, starting at the top here, no, I wasn't very, this is somebody else's. I went ahead and took this sheet and I put them in a different order that made more sense to me and omitted a few of the colors. So I have they have orange, I call it sunset, and I think the blends between the two of these are very similar. Sunshine is right next to it. Let's go ahead and go down so we're focusing on the So now you should see these two blends. And of course I did them reverse of each other, but I think they both blended nicely. Burnt orange, which is a challenging one. I ended, I ended up adding a fourth color. I'm not really a three color blender person. I like four to six, pretty much. I don't see any that I did three on, on my, my adjusted sheet. So burnt orange is fun because you have the pop of fuchsia in the middle. Um, I didn't emphasize the fuchsia in the middle on this one where I did make sure there was a nice representation and it made a really nice burnt orange on the one side and then a really nice deep fuchsia purple on the other side. Poppy is actually way up here. And I really think that is a beautiful blend. So I'm very happy with the Evazar blending ability. And they are very vivid. And the only place that I ran into trouble is down here in the greens. So let's look at the palm. So here is what Artex palm looks like. 
actually lime green and palm just really smooth I had a heck of a time look at the weird uh, little modeling uh, that's because I had to work and work and work both moss and palm and they really do have sort of a a dry crumbly pigment I guess and then what I'm curious about is I colored so much look how much comes off now I'm going to test like I said I haven't done anything with these Artex in a long time let's see if we get some pigment off of this dark we get a little bit uh, but it feels different this feels powdery over here and I can even feel the tooth of the paper towel rubbing where here it's slick yeah I don't want to mess any of my color combos up let's do purple yeah I don't see hardly any of the purple and I don't even feel there's no resistance at all to the paper towel going over these colors and though they are what I would call burnished and they are shiny uh, these are also all burnished uh, very shiny but I still can feel the pigment on the paper even though they are burnished and shiny but beautiful colors beautiful combinations another fun one that I, I like is this very violet so I did the violet and here is where my violet overlapped I don't think I hear so let's try erasing I've got a little mini eraser here I didn't have this eraser with me and what I'm wondering is if it will stain the paper or if it will come off cleanly yep that erases very well okay that's good 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 all right color combos done let's do some testing with whites So we'll do these three that I grabbed. Here's Pablo. I am expecting nothing short of spectacular with these three. Probably of the three, the one that won't be as bright will be Pablo. Well, that's not too bad. Pablo's looking pretty good. This is drawing. Uh, this one, the Museum Aquarelle, I will even use it wet. I will tip, take the tip and wet it down. Oops. And that's uh, put M. So this, this one is of the three the best, which I expected. All right, now let's see how the Evazar and I'm gonna sharpen it I have been using it I will see and I'll even do a demo of my technique I was using well that is a very nice white isn't it that is better than Pablo almost better than the drawing but not quite as good as the museum aquarelle and then let's break out this Artex has not been sharpened. There you have it. The Evazar actually does a really nice job. I noticed yesterday with this drawing that I will share next that I felt the Evazar really handled well. It felt to me like a luminance. And like I said, I don't have the luminance white handy. I might have an extra though. Let's see. I think titanium buff. Titanium. Oh, buff titanium. All three of these are buff titanium. Is this white? Oh, that's white. Found one. So let's see. 
since I'm just starting this collection yeah Evazar is better than Luminance better than Artex better than Pablo probably equal to the drawing well I was very impressed yesterday with what I was coloring and how it was changing Again, to me, it feels like j combining two taffies together. So I think I'm going to show you my project now. And then I will do a little demo of how I, how I did it. So I have this drawing. I want to give um, a little pre-sample. So this particular drawing, I did a really, really terrible coloring job last Christmas with a set of pencils that I bought. They were a 48. They were the ones that I was thinking of using for coloring class. And it just came out. Oh, and you can't see this because I need to move out. All right. So what I like about these various digital coloring pages is a lot of them will give you a grayscale and a black and I do not ever use the black if I have the grayscale available to me so I just wanted to have you see what they both look like and then I'm going to pop in the one that I am working on and we're going to keep this gray because I'm gonna do a test of one of these flowers in Artex and the Evazar but here is my drawing that I have been working on and the technique like I said I feel like what I am doing is putting down a color and then I stretch the color which is the pulling of taffy in my mind to extend the color out and then because I'm I like to do the realism and flowers have these little faint veins running through them so I like to pull in the direction vertically along the flower and then I come back in and I add little little ticks of dark lights and when I'm pulling with the white to drag the color and thin it out so to speak and blend in with that color they get these you get these little fine streaks so that your petals get a shape look to them because flower petals are not perfectly flat so that is the technique that I will share today. This is a monochromatic drawing and I of course finished the horse itself, his, his or her body is the dark and then I found that I could even work it a little bit more though it looks pretty smooth. I had to take the white and very softly I smoothed out these, this purple. This purple is 51. So the set of colors that I used here and where I feel the Ebazar could go lighter and darker. This is black. That's black. Oh, got both of them out. So Onyx is a brownie black and the rich black is the true dark blue black that I like, uh, especially for this project. So these are in color order. Um, I will do this blend and the darkest color is 51 and the lightest color is 47 and again they go in order and then I did have but I never used I grabbed that slate gray 127 and I didn't need it for anything it's actually kind of a middle of the road color it's like maybe E50 so I used the white to pull on these flowers I'm going to zoom in now. So these flowers where I detected some lines being generated, I, I took the middle like either 47 or 48, probably 40, yeah, 48, the second one. I did little ticks, little tick marks 
that you should probably be able to see to give the kind of the hint of folds in the flower elements and then I took in the middle area where normally that would be yellow I want this monochromatic and even the tail everything is going to be purple when I'm done I just stopped at you know to me the flowers and the horse base color was the easiest part uh, now when I move up through the wings it's going to be more challenging um, I see that one of my tones here of one of the middle colors, either 48, 49, probably 48 or 49, it's a little bit um, bumpy looking, so I might take and do small circles to even this out. I don't want the white to alter the color. I just want to use it to smooth it out. And because the blender doesn't really work very well with these pencils because it picks up the pigment, which I don't want, I chose to use the white. So I can keep working this and working this until it's exactly perfect and I can add more petal details. Along the bottom of the centers of the flowers, I did add the 51 around the circles, the little white circles. They have stayed white and I think I'm going to put um, like a clear stardust, which is a jelly roll pen that I have. So these will be glistening, but I didn't want to add any height to it. So I didn't want to stickle. And I think that this drawing is so delicate that I don't think I could add stickles with into these tiny dot areas, so I really need a fine point pen. So I am going to now set this one aside. I'll have a photo of it at the end. I have this that I'm saving. I've already got these. I've got the color blend for this, and I'm going to grab, if I can find it easily, because now I've got piles on either side of me. I want to do the color blend. These are the five purples that I found in the Artex. And of course I can't find it. That would be just way too easy. So what that means is I will do a set of both really quick. That won't take long. Since I haven't touched these Artex in a long time, I am just going by the barrels. There are some difference. So you see that the five Evazars all look like light to dark. They all look in the same color family. These look to be like there's some bluey purples and some pinky purples. So, but it was the closest I could find. So I am going to start with the lightest one. We'll see if I can get you, if I can read these. This is Wisteria and I can't even read that number. It's so small. It's like, if I squint, 4139. And I'm going to, I'm doing heavy, so I'm kind of doing what I would consider the waxy prismacolor smooshing technique. So I've got it really dark and then it's lightening out. The second one is Parma Violet. I cannot really read that. 4166 maybe. Starting out heavy. will still need to blend them together some, I see. These do feel different. Like I said, I haven't touched them in a long time. Many months. And I've done lots of coloring in between time. Actually, gonna go back and do a little. 
So what I like about this is I can come back with this light color and immediately blend. And I am not a very consistent small circles colorist, I've noticed. I can kind of go back and forth. I sometimes will rotate my paper. If I'm trying to get something really smooth, I, I'll go in uh, multiple directions. All right, so I think I like this darkest one. This, this, did I tell you what the color is of the fourth one? I did not. Ultramarine Violet. 4176. You guys can probably see that better than I can. Cobalt Violet. 4222. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. Huh. Okay. See, I really like this dark. 52 or 51 is not this dark. All right, so that's the full scale of blending. I do have the white here. Um, all right, so let's do a quick set of blending. From light to dark, we've got 47 lilac. Forty-eight is amethyst. Lavender blue, forty-nine. Fifty Regalia Purple. Or is it Regalia? Fifty one Royal Purple. I'm going to grab the white and do a nice layering. I'm not burnishing because I'm not going hard. I am just trying to do a nice mixing of the colors together. So I actually, so far, I'm liking the dark that I get from the Artex. I have a pencil somewhere here. This is the Artex and this is the Ephazar. And now comes the fun part. We're going to do a flower. So, make sure you can see the top of the horse's head. The first flower is going to be the Evazar, and I'm just going to color like I did So. I just started out with a light layer. 
and that's like for the top petals. Then I went with the darkest and I started filling in and I'm not using heavy pressure. And I wanted to get some shadows going so there was sharpening happening as I was doing this to keep my tip as delicate as possible. We've got the horse's ear. We have a flower petal coming behind, but that's above this one. And now we're going to go into this one. And I'm used to working on my clipboard, and I'm not on my clipboard, so I I tend to, for consistency, I think I've said this before, I color in one direction, and I rotate my paper, and that is how I am used to, oops, see, and I already moved too close, uh, so that's how I am used to keeping a consistent look. I'm always and then see I'm sitting up tall I'm usually used to slouching in my recliner with my feet up because this is my relaxing time okay so we have a long tenderly I'm kind of going back and doing a second layer over the top on what I consider to be the shadowed petals. And this is the darkest I have, so I have to be careful with this flower not to get the centers darker than my shadow lines can get. Okay, so now I'm going to go. I actually think I went in and did, this was before. Again, see I'm still keeping straight lines for the goal of having these petals have the faint look of veins to them. All right. I have this little tendril here. going to grab the white. That is not white. I'm going to sharpen it.
Sorry, I'm so quiet. I am actually used to coloring in silence. So each petal gets its own set of veins and I am working on pulling the taffy as I think of it to blend the color but still leave some streaks in it because those are the veins and sometimes I will I do this with markers I will carry in my hand multiple pencils So you'll see that this color and this color are, they are two different tones. So I'm sort of mixing those two tones on this very long tenderly petal. So I'm gonna keep those handy separately from the other ones. I want every petal to not have the look so you can see that these petals still have a greeny look to them. I am using the petal to smooth them out and I used one layer on the top petals and the ones behind I did two layers and that was enough to fill in the tooth enough for what I am after. I will still be going back in to darken that one up. Again, the whole thing is to pull these lines and lengthen out the petals. I really like how this one is looking. So these particular coloring pages, if you join the Ruby Charm Colors, I believe it's all one word, Facebook group, these are available in the files section to download. Oops, you can't see that. I apologize for if I keep getting my coloring off the page. It's hard to do it this way. So this is the start. I have smoothed out the darker under petals. I usually have my craft glasses on and I did not bring them so hopefully they are looking okay.
Yeah, I'm really impressed with this white. Okay, so now, grabbing the dark, sharpening it. I'm going around these center circles. darkening up the under flowers. interested to see how using these same techniques works with the Artex. All right, so there is one flower. And then I think I took, to be consistent, I think I took 48. And added some shadows and vein marks. You are off the page again. I hear somebody at the door, so I'm going to pause and see who it is. I am back. It was a delivery. So I would like to have darker veins. This is 49. So in this case, I'm needing very sharp tips. So there's the Evazar flower. Now right next to it, I am going to put an Artex flower. Oops, I got a 
make sure you can see. not sharpened this yet but I think I will need to This is darker than the other one. Okay, so I am going to use, the first one was the lightest, which is called Wisteria 4139. Then I went into the dark, the darkest darks to block them out, A4222 Cobalt Violet. Now I am grabbing Parma Violet, which is the second lightest color. And I didn't even talk about, so when I do hair, like human hair, I pick if it's a zigzag, like this tendril is, is going back and forth, I pick one part of the curve, that's the under part, and the part that's hitting the sun is the, like, this right here is getting sun. In here, I've picked my darks, and then this is getting sun. So I hope that makes sense. I And I'm not, you know, you pick your light source and my light is off here to this direction. Uh, and so I just envision how the sun would be hitting the different layers. So now I've got to fill in the tooth and I'm going to use this second lightest one. I kind of thought that this, these dark, these need to be darker. So I'm not going to use white on this second one. get some more dark in there. So I want that under petal to be maybe a tiny bit darker than where it starts over here. 
and then these little areas are going to be super dark because they're behind that and I want nice separated lines with acting as shadow lines So let's get this white. And I know this white we already tested and it's not as vibrant, but its purpose is not necessarily for brightness, it's to smooth. Smooth and stretch the color out. That's doing a good job. I hope you can see this. Can you even see what I'm doing? I hope you could see that. Like I said, I am running the white following the direction I want the veins of the flower's petals to show. And then these dark areas also need to be smoothed out. I put more dark for this than the other flower. I think you can see. It's not bad. Okay, I now want to. This is forty one seventy, forty one seventy ultramarine violet. Let's see how this works. Need to sharpen it. is about it. At this point I would be fine-tuning and doing the middles of the two flowers so maybe I will do that and I want to darken so I'm grabbing, I'm looking for 51 that is my darkest purple that I have, and I want to get in here. Artex has a bit of an advantage having that lovely super dark purple. At this point, if you are curious, I am 
adding a lot more pressure to these very thin lines. I'm also rotating my pencil, being really careful that I get this sharp. the sharp edge. I'm now just running lines, trying to get the veiny texture to come out in the back flowers. <sighs> so as you can tell, I am a very slow coloring person. So there you go. Two flowers. The one on the right is Artex. The one on the left is Evazar. Overall, I like the bluey purple, consistent bluey purple on the left side a little better than the Wisteria color. These two color tones are a little more pinky purple. You can see them coming out on that flower on the right, but I really really like uh, this cobalt violet. This very dark violet back in there is lovely. I really like that color a lot. So you can add more hints like I could keep this petal going it almost looks like a very dark shadow of it right in here coming through from this one so you can do lots of really cool things with the controlling of your lights and darks so i like both pencils the using them felt very much very similar um I thought that the white, even though it's not strong on the black, the Artex white did its job of lengthening the, the kind of tenderly look. Um, I even went a little too heavy on, I think, the purples of the upper petals of the Evazar on the left. I would then come back in and try to do some erasing with this very fine eraser, trying to lighten this up and still go in lines to keep the veins looking like veins. Uh, this, this particular tendril of the petal needs to stay pretty light, but see how I've lightened up the bottom part of it? I think it got too dark. I wanted more variation trying to get the sun glinting its light. And I don't like that right there. So my favorite thing coming from the Copic world about colored pencils that you just really don't have any control over with markers is that I can erase. This feels like it is a pencil to me. It is like a subtraction pencil. And I go in here and I will play and alter the lights and the darks and the lights and the darks. Uh, I am not in any hurry when I color. So if I think that a part of something is too dark, I will lighten it up, darken it up, lighten it up, darken it up until I get the exact look that I am after. So I love both of these pencils a lot. Um, 
I, I've done the whole, you know, all of the color combos. I've used these purples for this whole um, project and I don't feel, and I've kept them sharp. I've had to keep sharpening. You can even look at the, the tips of these and see where, you know, this one is not, oh, this one I haven't used, slate gray. That's why it's so dark. Uh, one of them is over here. So this one's not very sharp, but they're still pretty darn long. And um, I have yet in all of my colorings to really wear out a set of pencils. And what impresses me the most is when I see people showing their full color pencil selection and they have like these little, just little nubs left, you know, two inch remnants and they're very sad and they may or may not have bought another set of those pencils to replace them. Um, I have lots of extras of all of the light colors in the luminance and the polychromos I have, the dark like the walnut brown for doing the animal portraits that I have done. I have extras of those but all of these pencils that I've been buying just in the last two years. Um, I keep using them and I have not worn them down. I was looking to see if I had a really short brute funer yet, the squares, and I still see that I have lots of life left in those. Lots of life. Um, so that's what I love about colored pencils is that you can erase and they seem to last forever no matter how much you color. They last a very long time and they're very reasonably priced. So I'm going to back this out now. Here is my completed one with the two flowers that I have just created. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you think about seeing me actually color. I would want to get to doing more coloring where I color with you guys. It is not my thing I'm used to doing. I am much more used to doing walkthroughs and such. Uh, and I know that I don't need to bore you guys to tears watching because I am very, if I'm slow making flowers, can you imagine how slow I am to swatch? So thank you for your subbing. Be sure to share this channel with others that you think would appreciate and uh, the content that I have been putting out comments, questions, concerns, add to the comments. I will respond. Love to interact with you guys. I am done with Evazar. I have I have three pencils left to work on. I have Marie's that I started and you guys chose uh, Evazar. I have the Kalura 180s. I did not ever finish because then I went on vacation and right before vacation I got these two price-wise. Ah, I forgot to tell you. I paid the same price for each of these sets. The Artex I got for $39.99 and the Evazar I got for $39.99. So both evenly priced. Uh, the Artex is 126 pencils, Evazar 130 pencils. I do think those could these could be used together with the slight variation in these two flowers if I wanted to integrate now this super dark artex cobalt violet um, even at this point in this part being done I could go in to the darks and I could darken up the shadow bits with this really dark purple and I know it would do a fantastic job so I feel in looking at this that it could really benefit from some really dark darks. So I think I am going to now allow myself to intermix these two pencils because I think they work well together. And um, on that note, I will let you guys go. And the next time I will be coming back, I have a couple of fun things to share. I have a whip to share with you of non evazar stuff that I have been working on and then I also will get to work on the Marie's. Uh, I might do a poll and I will see, I have the feeling if I did Kalur 180 
or Marie's, let, I'm going to guess that it would be Kalur. So I might do a poll for that. And uh, that's it. Signing off. Thanks so much for watching.